You know, Rome is teaches us this family. It says to, matter of fact, it says, I, I beseech you, my brothers and sisters, I urge you to, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord. Is there anybody in here today that's willing to lay on the altar to say, God, whatever that doesn't belong to you, burn it right now. And whatever we have in us that's connected to you, we lift up the name, we lift it up to you. Can we just lay on the altar and say, God, the burn consuming fire. Release, burn whatever doesn't belong to you. We lift up the name of Jesus. We praise his name. Holy and acceptable is the fragrance of your holiness being lifted up in this place. Can we just begin to raise our hands? and acceptable. As, I, as Marquise was leading us into worship, I can even hear the Holy Spirit saying more to him that he's saying, come to my own boldly with your prayers. If anybody has some dangerous prayers in here this morning, that we're not approaching his throne with a what if, but we're approaching his throne as we know our Father can and he will because his promises has already gone forth and he is a God that cannot lie. Is there anybody in here who's willing to approach his throne with some dangerous, some dangerous prayers today? Say, Father God, touch my family. Father God, touch my health. Father God, touch the one that's far, that's far lost. God, you are a God that can do the impossible. And when the impossible begins to show up in your life, I just thank God that he's a possible. He's a way maker. Does anybody have some dangerous threads in here this morning? Oh, release the sound of a dangerous prayer in here this morning. Release your prayers. Release your dangerous prayers. Knowing that your God is a God that can do it. Can I say it this way? As we begin to shift into the message, here's what God been telling me all this week, Lynn. He can handle my limitations. Whoa. God is saying, I can handle your limitations. Where you feel as though that you can't meet the standard, where you feel as though that you don't have the adequate resources, where you feel as though that you're in a dead end, my God says, I can handle your limitations. Why? Because I'm the way maker. I'm the one that's moving in your life. Where you feel as though that you don't have the very thing to step into your next, you serve a God that can handle your limitations. Holy and acceptable. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Exodus 4. We're going to read 1 through 12. You can stay standing for the reading. I'm going to get you seated pretty quickly, I promise. Verse 1, it reads this, family. It said, Moses answered, what if they won't believe me and will not obey me, but say the Lord did not appear to you? A what if? My God, God can handle your what if today, family. Anybody in here got some what ifs? Oh, come on. I know I'm not by myself. I got some what ifs. Some what ifs approached me this week. I'm telling you. Some what ifs will show up in your life at the wrong time. And doubt will begin to slip in. And frustration will begin to slip in. But I thank God that he sent the Holy Spirit to touch you right where you have a what if. Verse 2, the Lord asked him, what is that in your hand? A staff, he replied. So Moses threw it on the ground and it became a snake and he ran from it. The Lord told Moses, stretch out your hand and grab it by the tail. So he stretched out his hand and he caught it and it became a staff in his hand. This would take place, he continued, so that they will believe that the Lord, the God of their ancestors, the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has appeared to you. In addition, the Lord said to him, put your hand inside your cloak. So he put his hand inside his cloak, and when he took it out, his hand was diseased, resembling snow. But you put your hand back inside your cloak, he said. 
So he put his hand back inside his cloak, and when he took it out, it had become like the rest of his skin. If they will not believe you and will not respond to the evidence of the first sign, they may believe the evidence of the second sign. And if they don't believe even these two signs, or listen to what you say, take some water from the Nile, pour it on the dry ground. The water you take from the Nile will become blood on the ground. But Moses replied to the Lord, please, Lord, <laughs> I have never been eloquent, either in the past or recently or since you have been speaking to your servant. In other words, I had some limitations in the past. I had some limitations in the now. God, can you just remove this from me? Matter of fact, can you just choose somebody else? Because I guess my history has some past. My history has some limitations. Matter of fact, right now I have some limitations. God, are you sure? Is anybody in here this morning with me? To speak to your servant because my mouth and my tongue are sluggish. The Lord said to him, who placed a mouth on humans? Who makes a person mute deaf, sin, or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will speak and I will teach you what to say. Family, I want to take the next few minutes and I want to speak this message. Hear my heart on this. The gift of a limitation. The gift, come on, turn to your neighbor. The gift of a limitation. Father God, we love you. We honor you. We thank you for your word. We thank you that your presence is in here right now. That we feel your presence. Your presence is moving even right now. As we sit in your prayers, Lord God, we, we thank you that you begin to open up our ears, open up our mouths, that we can feel your way. Speak to us like you have never spoken to us before. Touch us in our heart. Touch us in our mind. Begin to move us and draw us closer to you. It's nothing like your presence. It's nothing like your word. Let your word fall on good ground today. It is in Jesus' name. Come on, church. Somebody shout amen. 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 You can go ahead and have your seats. We're going to dismiss our C kids students. Come on. Can we make some noise for our C kids students? Come on. I know the Diaz is over. Let's do, come on, family. Can we do better than that? I'm telling you. Our C kids, next gen leaders are awesome. I'm telling you, the, the life changing uh, what's happening in, in our C kids students. I'm telling you, it is phenomenal. But uh, before I jump into the message, I definitely want to do it. Come on, ladies, can we make some noise for yesterday? If you attended, come on. Yeah, there you go. Sisterhood brunch on yesterday. If you missed it, come on. Pastor Brenda, I want to honor you. I want to honor all of the ladies who came out. I'm telling you, you guys had a party. I saw the video. There was some dancing going. I know the word went forward, but there was some good food. There was some dancing. I'm telling you, Pastor Brent, I know you my babe, you my, my wife. I love you so much, but I, I love the grace that's on your life to invite all women to sit at the table. That there's no cliche, that there's no clicks. Come on, everybody has a seat at the table. You have such an anointing to bring women together where everybody doesn't matter your background, it doesn't matter your walk of life. You have a seat at the table. That is a grace from God, and I, I thank you so much for that. But uh, before we shift into the message, I, I want to stay on, on task. So let's do this, fam. You guys can go ahead and turn your attention towards the screen. Amen? Be the Good Project has a really simple mission, to connect our volunteers with safe and easy ways to help feed our neighbors who are experiencing hunger and food insecurity. We do this primarily through three different ways, the first of which is our seasonal food bags or care packages. Since 2020, we've delivered more than 2,800 bags of food to more than three dozen different partners across the region that serve families who need access to supplemental groceries. Those include schools, nonprofits, and community centers. The second way is through sandwiches. Nearly every week, our volunteers make and deliver sandwiches where we collect them in Alexandria, refrigerate them, and deliver them to Anacostia. Our partners at Martha's Table then take them to the homeless each and every day. 
Since July of 2020, our volunteers have made more than 84,000 sandwiches for the homeless. The third way our volunteers help to serve the community is through our network of little free food pantries. Currently, there are 24 of these little boxes planted across the region from Rockville, Maryland to Springfield, Virginia. And each and every weekend, our amazing volunteers go to them and fill them up with non-perishable, unexpired, non-glass food. They serve the purpose of providing emergency resources in the communities where they're planted. This spring, we're praying over new partnerships and new ways that we can continue to help serve the community, including by planting new little free food pantries in communities where they're needed. We are looking forward to working with more volunteers across the region, and we're just so grateful for folks like you who are willing to help. It really does make a difference in the lives of others, those small acts of kindness and those small acts of generosity, they build on each other and we've seen it firsthand through Be The Good Project, all of the good work that has been done through the hands of so many. More than a thousand volunteers have made this possible. All right, come on, can we put our hands together for Sir Sunday? Come on, who signed up for Sir Sunday? Come on, who signed up? I'm calling you out, there we go. Come on, if you have not family, you have not signed up for Sir Sunday just yet. Matter Go ahead and pull out your phone right now. Come on. I want to see you scan the QR code right now. Serve Sunday is next Sunday. So don't break my heart. Don't break my heart. Don't show up here at the movie theater for service because instead of having service in here, family, we're going actually going to be taking a gospel outside of the four walls of this theater, and we're actually going to go serve our community to make a difference, family. So I'm super. The team has been uh, working so diligently, so hard. Um, shout out to our staff and our, our outreach directors, the Kingsley. They've been doing an awesome job so that we can be in a great position to share the love of Christ and make a difference. So if you didn't sign up yet, Definitely go to and definitely sign up. I'm saying they, they sent me over some amazing goals. Can we can we knock out these goals, family? Are we family? Can we knock out these goals right here? They said we are up to the challenge. Can we make 600 sandwiches for homeless? I think we can do that, Julie. Can we do that? Can we do that? Amen. Okay. Hey, I'm, we're, we're putting it to the task right now. They said we have to assemble 40 bags. And these 40 bags, hear this family, hear my heart on this. I love this. These 40 bags you just saw about the little food pantries, we're actually going to be sponsoring. We're actually going to be uh, serving 17 little food pantries throughout the uh, city of Virginia. I'm in the city of Alexandria, Fairfax, and also Maryland. Come on, somebody. We're going across the bridge to serve Maryland as well. That's 17 little food pantries that's going to make a difference for families. Not only we're going to touch them in a tangible need, but we're going to pray over that food as well. And we believe the love of Christ is going to touch that family and also begin to touch that family. We, we are asking God. God, hey God, touch him, a way maker, whatever the need besides a touch of intangible need in food, but also touch their heart, touch their spirit. So family, I'm telling you, if you have not signed up yet, there's multiple ways that you can sign up. I mean, uh, multiple ways that you can contribute. You can contribute through giving or you can contribute through serving. Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, you can do both. How about that? Come on. But hey, family, let's make a difference. Hear my heart on this before we shift into the uh, message. Let's make a difference. Amen. 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 The gift of a limitation. Hopefully you've been enjoying this series called I Am Here. We're in week four of I Am Here. Here's what this series is all about. Maybe this is your first time here. In this series, we are learning how to maximize our now moment in God. We live in a society, Julius, where, where ambition is always pulling us to the next. That we're always reaching towards the future, and that's a great thing, but sometimes we can actually fail at, at maximizing our now moment. That God is doing some things in your life right now. That the space that you are standing on is holy, and where holy is represented, that means of everything that you need is present in your life right now. That we can begin to be in a space and a season of our life where we're waiting for God to do the next. So our prayers is all about the next. Our vision is always about the next. And hear my heart, these are some great things. But what God is sharing with me right now, and even that what he shared with Moses, what's in your hand? In other words, what's in your now? What's in your now that God can begin to move and do something in your now moments? But the more that we begin to lean in, 
I began to have conversations even more with con- um, congregants through, through this series. And they say, hey, I, I hear what you're saying, Pastor Ant. I hear that you're saying that God is doing something right now. But can I be honest with you, Pastor Ant? Like, now is hard. Now is a, a little frustrating. Now my heart is breaking. Now I don't see any peace. I, I hear what you're saying, Pastor Ant, and you're, you're preaching the word of God, and I, I believe I have faith, but to be honest with you, I don't really see what you're saying because right now all I see is pain. So how do you deal with pain and also deal with holiness being present at the same time? So we, we live in this space and, and what God began to speak to me even more and I began to share with you guys even in here is that, is that God can handle your limitations. That the very thing that you feel as though that's limiting you, God is saying, I can actually handle that limitation. See, to be honest, if I could be true, true with you guys, when I think of limitations, I really don't like limitations. I, I don't like anything holding me back. I don't like anything that's keeping me from going forth. I don't like speed limits. Come on, somebody. I'm taking it there. Yeah, Julie, I know Mustang Julius, I know. I don't like speed limits. I don't like anything that's telling me I can't go a certain miles per hour. But a speed limit is actually put in place to regulate us so that we can live a safe life. But I don't like speed limits. To be honest, I, I, I don't like that my... My 36-year-old body doesn't allow me to eat oatmeal cream pies at nighttime anymore. <laughs> my, my, my 21-year-old body is saying, go for it. My 36-year-old body is saying, nah, bro, you're going you're gonna to be hurting in the morning. There's some limitations. My health has some limitations. And if I don't obey by the limitation, there's a pain, there's a price that I'm going to pay. The limitation is actually put in my life for a reason. Uh, the fact, even I'm thinking now, like even at our church office, uh, I know uh, our staff member, uh, our, our uh, director of operations, Sarah, she's going to get on me about this. But I, I don't like that our building doesn't let me turn the AC on and off when I want to. <laughs> we pay the bill. I lay in my house. I get to turn it on and off. Why can't I do that at the office? If I want hot heat, I want heat. If I want AC, I want AC. Why do you have to put a limitation on me and tell me what to do? But Sarah said, because, because Anthony, there's, there's people like you who like to keep flipping it on and off, and that actually hurts the system, and you're actually going to crush the system, and, and that's going to actually pay money. There's, in other words, there's a consequence. If there wasn't a limitation put in, there's a consequence that you're getting. See, my, so I'm understanding that limitations are put in our life for a reason. See, so even though that what I'm finding out more and more in this season is that even though limitations are uncomfortable, it doesn't mean that limitations are bad. So you can be in a space in a season of your life right now where your limitation actually feels uncomfortable. But it doesn't mean that it's bad. Could the, could the inconvenience in your life right now be setting you up for something what God is getting ready to do? I wrote it this way. See, the limitations in our life are here actually to protect something so that it can release something. So the limitation that you're seeing in your life is actually God, God beginning to guard something that's precious in order to guard it. He wants to protect it so that in this due season, he can release it. Could it be, could it be, could it be that the limitation that you're feeling is God actually having you right in the pot and he's cooking you up. He's brewing you up. He's protecting you. He's guarding you because in your due season, if you don't faint or grow weary, he will release you right into the very thing that you need. Your, your limitation could actually be a blessing and not a curse. See, see, in this, in this now moment, what I'm recognizing is that I have some limitations even in my husbandhood, in my fatherhood, in my leadershiphood. I got, I got some limitations. Even when I preach to y'all, I feel like I got some limitations. And I'm finding out more God is saying, Anthony, expose your limitations. Because when you begin to expose your limitation, now I can do something with it. See, God can only bless what you release. See, God can only bless what you expose. I love the fact that Moses was in a season of his life when he began to look at his hand, he saw all that his limitations. It wasn't until Moses exposed it so that God can begin to bless it. 
So you're trying to cover your limitations up. And God is saying, I want you to expose it because when you begin to expose it, I can bless the real you. I will never bless the phony you. In this season of your life, how are you being phony with God? Come on, somebody, talk to me. Are you being phony with God or are you being real? This is what dangerous prayers is all about. Dangerous prayers is saying, God, take me as I am. Even in my flaws, even in my weakness, I release and I present myself to you. God wants to bless the real you, not the phony you. I wrote it this way that found out spaces in my life that Maybe rejection is actually God's protection for your due season. So where you feel as though that you're being overlooked and unappreciated, could it be that God has been actually protecting you so that he can release you in a due season? See, 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 God can, and I ask this question because to be honest, God asked me this question, and you know how you know how I am, family. If God asks me a question, I'm not gonna go through this question by myself. You guys gonna join in on this question too. So God asked me a question. I'm a I'm gonna ask you a question, and the question is: Can God trust you in a limited season? Can God trust you in a limited season? Can God trust you in a season where you don't where you feel as though that you don't have everything? Does your, is your heart still pure but towards, for, uh, towards God? Is your heart still in, in, in a space? Can, can God trust you to be faithful over the small things so that he can lead you to the, something bigger? Can God trust you in a limited season? See, the more I walk with God, I find out this is that, that God is all about limits. God is all about limits. We, we sing that song. Matter of fact, what, what's that song? Uh, somebody, uh, Israel Newbury. I love that song, Marquise. No limits. I sound good. A flat, B, C. Where we at? No flat. Okay. No limits. No boundaries. Oh, I love that song. That's a throwback right there. Come on, Marquise. Woo, we're going to have a choir here next week. I love that song because it's, it pulls me to the next. No matter what season I'm in, no limits, no barrier. I, I stick my chest out when I sing that song. I'm finding out even more in this season, God is saying that we can always reach forth and say no limits. But can you be in a position of your life where you ask God can teach you how to embrace a limit? Can, can, you're, we're, we're, we're so teaching a lot of times, break forth through the limit. No limits. Go, go forth. And God is showing me more in this season. Can I teach you, Anthony, how to embrace a limit? Embrace the very thing that's limiting you. Embrace the very thing that you feel as though that's hindering you. Because God is a God that's all about limits. Let me, let me teach it a little bit because when I read in Genesis, this is how we kicked off this series. Adam and Eve was in a garden. Matter of fact, God gave them what? A limit. He gave them a limit. He said, do not eat from that tree, even though it's God. God can do what he want to do. But he gave what? He gave them a choice so they can follow through with obedience. He gave them a limit. So I asked the question, can God trust you with a limit? Matter of fact, Joshua and the, and the Israelites, like, come on, somebody, 40 years. 40 years, they get there. They can taste it. They can see it. And before they can go through, God did what? He placed what? A limit. Told him to stay right there, march around it uh, seven or eight times. And, and at the moment, come on, somebody, at a sudden moment, you would begin to blow and shift into the next. They went 40 years. Now God said, give me another week. Can God trust you with a limit? Can you still stay connected to me on a limit? My God, can, can, can we talk about Jesus a little bit? Because Jesus, come on, ridiculed, spit on, beaten, bloody, all for you and I. Matter of fact, all hung on a cross, they ridiculed him. Matter of fact, Jesus could have called uh, all of the angels to rescue him. He had to do what? He had to place a limit on himself in order for the plan to be fulfilled. Limits actually helped the plan get fulfilled. Jesus had to relinquish himself, step out of heaven, come down, limit himself in order to go forth with the plan. Could it be that God has you in a season right now where he's teaching you and he's molding you all through limits? A limit in this season. A limit in this season. So as soon as we recognize the limits, 
the quicker we can enjoy them. Now, can you recognize the limits in your life? See, see, without knowing the limits, we actually do more harm to ourselves than good. This is why it's, it's, it's so crucial to our life to make sure that we, we know what our limits are because your limits is actually getting ready to produce a harvest in your life. You have to know the limits that's in your life. See, I want to say it this way because when, when we're studying this particular text found in Exodus 4 with Moses, is that Moses had a limit. I mean, here's Moses' family. Moses, 80 years old. Moses, 80 years old, and God calls Moses his assignment while Moses was working. He speaks to Moses and he says, Moses, I'm calling you to do something. And Moses responded with his limitation. In other words, Moses responded with his shortcomings. See, see, I, I love the fact that, that God doesn't call the equip. But 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 he equips the call. Yeah. So so in other words, if you feel as though that you're not equipped for the very thing that God is calling you to, that could be a great uh, that could be a great clue in your life to understand that he will equip you because he called you. Yeah. So if you feel as though that you don't have the very thing to step forth in the very thing that he's called you to, I'm just here to brag on you a little bit that you're getting ready to get equipped for what he's getting ready to do in your life because he doesn't call the ones who's already equipped. He calls and then he equips. So you feel as though that you're in a season and you have vision and you have purpose and you know what God is speaking to you in your now, but you feel as though that you are not equipped, get ready because God is getting ready to equip you. Because when a great I am is here and a great I am is present with you, the very thing that you need comes right there with you. I look at Moses' life. Yeah, matter of fact, if you go through, you can see Moses' response. I mean, he's beginning to, re to respond with unworthiness. Could it be that, that we understand because we get to read it and Moses had a past. And in fact, Moses killed somebody, guys. You're yeah, breaking news. Moses had a past. Moses done something. He's saying, you know what? I, I'm not worthy to step into the very thing that you called me to step into because I have a past. I have a history. See, I love the fact preaching in here that we will always preach about grace. Yes. That it doesn't matter what your past or your history look like or what somebody else has done to you. God's words about you does not stop. Yes. God's words continue to chase you down. God is still speaking to you. You may not be worthy, but he is worthy. And as long as he is worthy and still calling you, you have a plan what God wants to do in your life. Yes. So Moses went through some rejection. Or could it be that he just felt that he wasn't enough? I can, I, I, can, uh, I can agree with Moses that, you know, sometimes Moses even dealt with a little bit of fear of unbelief. I, I just don't know because the very thing that you're calling me to do just seems that it outweighs me. And if it feels heavy, that's God. Your vision and your dream for, for your life should outweigh you. It should, it, should, it, should, it, should, it should blow your mind. It should, you should be like, I don't know how I'm going to do that. If you feel as though that you can come up with all of the equations to fulfill the very vision and purpose for your life, breaking news, I don't think that's God's vision. Because God's vision will outweigh you to the, pack, to the point where you don't know what. That you're just trying to figure it out. And it, God will keep you humble. Come on, somebody. He will give you a vision and a dream that's so big that you cannot do by yourself that he will invite partners to come along with you. And step by step, piece by piece, God will begin to give you. Why? Because it's outweighing you. Yes. Moses dealt with unbelief because he started to look at himself and not look at God. The vision and dream that God is giving you don't allow yourself to look at yourself but to definitely look at God. See, I, I want to give you three. I want to give you three points real quick. I want to give you three points of dealing with limitations because God can handle your limitations. See, point number one, limits reveals God's love for us. It reminds me, it reminds me of uh, Princeton, Pastor Brenda. I was a little six-year-old, you know, the one we're still working on trying to get him saved. He's, he's quite there, you know. We need some vacation Bible school in here. We're, we're going to get him there. Come on. 
the little Princeton now that the weather is better, family, that he, he loves riding his, bike, his, his scooter. I'm sorry. But Princeton, love, he gets on his scooter. He's outside. He's doing his thing. Come on, somebody. He's riding his scooter. But Princeton understands the rules that his father puts in place. He understands if he goes to the left, he cannot go past the neighbor's driveway. He has to touch the driveway and come back. He understands if he go that way. You want to go right? You can go right. But that neighbor house, that driveway, you don't go past that driveway. Y'all don't know my son. Yeah, you're saying amen, but my son likes to touch or press against the boundary. And so here, yeah, here, go to the edge. And here, just look at me. <laughs> as if I don't see him and I see you, and he's looking at me as if I blink, I'm just going to miss him going past the boundary. See, I, I set a limit in his life. You know, Princeton, he has this thing now. He says to me, he says, I wish I was a teenager. I, I, I wish I was a teenager. Yeah, oh, no, 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 it's no ah. Uh. He said, I wish I was a teenager. And he says, why? Because my big brothers get to go past the driveway. My big brother gets to go all the way down there. And I'm just a little boy. I wish I was a teenager. See, see, little Princeton doesn't understand that I'm not trying to limit him. I'm actually trying to protect him. That my limits that I have placed in his life is actually love. That he sees it as being limited, but he doesn't see that I actually love him. Because I actually want to protect him because I am his father, has some plans for his life. I want to see my son to grow up to be a teenager. I want to see my son to grow up to be an adult. I want to see my son to grow up to do a miraculous and miraculous thing for the Lord of God of himself. I want to see my son so as a father, I place limit in his life so that he can actually grow up and be the very thing that he's called to do. Limits are actually love. When you learn how to embrace limits, you actually understand God's love for you. That God is actually not trying to limit you. He's actually trying to love you even more. Because when you are limited, it actually keeps you in position and humble right before God. Limits is actually God's love for you. I wrote it this way. Limit means love. See, point number two is this. Limits keep us in bounds. Limits keeps us in bounds. Just like Princeton, he, he will always try to press against the bounds. Matter of fact, I'm, as we're preaching even to our online folks, I, I see our creator, Pastor, Pastor Chris, probably one of the nicest guys. That he, everybody loves Pastor Chris, the nicest guy. As a matter of fact, Pastor Chris understands if I go a little bit too far, right, Pastor Chris? I, I'm supposed to stay. I, probably, I don't supposed to go off this carpet, right, Pastor Chris? Because he said, Pastor Ant, I just need you. To, he said it very nicely. I just need you to stay on the carpet because if you go off the carpet, they, they can't see you, Pastor Ant. He's so gracious, so just so nice. In other words, in, in my language, do stay on the carpet. <laughs> they can't see you. There's some parameters for a reason. They can't see you. You can't see me now, right? Can't see me. There's some parameters for a reason. He has given me a space to work. I put a copy down for you, Pastor Ann. You can do all what you want to do. Just make sure you do it in this space. I want to say it this way. God has given you a space in your life. And God is saying, I want you to work that space right where you are. Work your space. I know it's bad English and everything, but work the space that God has given you. You're praying for another space, and God is saying, I want you to work this space. Serve the space you're at right now. Serve where you're going, but serve the space that you're at right now. Love the space that you're in right now. Love where you're going, but love where you are. Give to the space that you're in right now. Give right where you are, but also give where you're going. What I'm trying to teach you right now is to understand when God spoke to Moses, he said it this way. I'll read the scripture in Exodus 3 and 4. He said, when the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called out to him from the bush, Moses, Moses, here I am. He answered, do not come closer. He said, remove the sandals from your feet. For the place where you are standing is holy ground in this space. 
Remove your sandals. In other words, I get a little bit uncomfortable with me. Well, it's already uncomfortable, God. I have limitations. Before shifting into a better season, Moses actually had to get a little bit more uncomfortable with God. Here is holy. Right here. Right where you are. Here is holy. Even though limitation was present, holiness was still present. How can limitations and holiness be in the same space at the same time? Because God can show up. God can show up right in your life, right where you need to be. We all in here and online as well had some limitation, but here is holy right here. It's holy. Why? Because the I am is here. You are, you are just not the only one here. The I am is here right here with you, right where you are. Limits may be uncomfortable, but they keep us in our spot. Can I say it this way, family? Don't forfeit the spot you are in right now, trying to get a better spot. See the spot that you're in right now. Water the spot that you are in right now. Love into the spot that you are in right now. Call on the name of Jesus in the spot that you are in right now. When you call on the name of Jesus in this spot, I'm preaching to somebody in here right now. You are in a season right now, and God is saying, call on me in this spot. Work your spot. Oh, work your spot in here. Work your God-given spot. Work the space that God has given you. See, number three, as I get ready to close down, number three, limits, actually, limits does this. Limits discipline me here in order to get me to there. Let me say it again. Limits discipline me here in order to get me to there. See, see, the beautiful thing about being limit, God family, is that, is that walking with Jesus, Jesus will always teach you how to commit to limits. I say it this way, to be a true disciple, you have to be disciplined. Discipline is all rooted in what? Limits. You have to limit yourself in order to something, in order to become something. Jesus is all about limits. What is God teaching me in my limit in this space of my life? What is God teaching you? Because without limits, limits could actually lead you to a destructive life. Limits protect you. Limits keep you on the path. This is what the parameter is all about. Limits is creating a roadway to your destiny. It keeps you in, 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 involved into the rhythm of what God is calling you to. So there's some things in your life that you just have to say no to. There's some things in this season of your life you got to say, you know what? No. Why? I got to place a limit on myself. Because the thing that God has birthed inside of me is far too value to that yes that I'm saying to. So I have to begin to say no because I understand my yes. If I understand my yes, I understand where I'm going. If I can't get my yes to something, then I don't understand the space that I am. So in this season, you got to learn how to have some non-negotiables. Do not allow a yes to take you away from the yes that you're supposed to be saying yes to. Whatever you say yes to, you are automatic saying no to. What are you saying in your season of your life right now that you're actually giving your no to unconsciously? Because you're constantly giving your yes to something else. And God is saying, I can't have you serving a double mind. I can't have you two-headed right now. I need you to be in a space in a season of your life, fully focused, fully devoted, fully yes. Why? Because what I've given you, I'm looking for you to birth something. And order to birth it, you got to be in your space. Get in position to give birth, family. Get in the proper position to give birth. Because I'm putting something in you, you have to be in position to birth it. The woman who goes through pregnancy, and I've never been pregnant a day in my life. So excuse me, every woman that has did it. I don't want to be that guy to preach about that. But understand, Pastor Brenda had to say no to some things in order to give birth to three sons. She understands she had a due date. She understands that she had to create a rhythm in her life to say no to certain things in order to be in position when that season comes to say yes, to push, to work her God-given spot. You are saying yes to something for a reason and it's worth it. Hear me. 
it is worth it. If I can say it this way, as we get ready to close out, because they're showing a movie in, in 30 minutes. <laughs> Isaiah 64, 8. Hopefully that movie is the passion of Christ. How about that? Isaiah 64, 8, it says this. Yet, Lord, you are the fa our father. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hands. In order for that, in order for that clay to be molded properly, it has to stay in a spot. It has to stay in a space in order to get heat, to get water. It has to stay in a, a divine spot. Come on, y'all know that movie, Ghost. Oh, I'll take you back, Donna, come on. Patrick, what is it, Patrick? There we go. Forty and 35 and old, I don't know. 20 years, like, huh, Ghost. <laughs> Gotta stay in that spot get water, to get the heat, to be what? The, 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 the powder, he, 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 he's the one that's doing the mending. He's the one that's setting the limits. He's the one that has the full vision of the image that you're supposed to be creating to. It's not you. So you might not understand the limit, just understand the limit came from your father because you're being created into an image. You don't fully know what the image is, but the Father does. And if the Father has given your limit, it's for a reason. Work your spot. To get ready to close, I want to close with this. I love this in Exodus 4 and 12. He says, now go. I will help you speak and I will help you teach. I will teach you what to say. I, I love that. that that, that God said, he said, I am the God of who gave you the mouth? Who gave you the tongue? Moses is saying this tongue is sluggish. God is saying, I am the one that gave you the tongue. In other words, God is saying in your weakness, I am the one that's getting ready to make you strong. God can show up in the very thing in your life that feels sluggish right now. Why? Because Paul, Apostle Paul said it this way. He said, when I am weak, matter of fact, I'll back it up a little bit. He said, I boast about my weakness. Why? Because I'm boasting because his word says where I am weak, he makes me strong. So wherever I am weak, God is getting ready to put himself in my weakness and reveal itself. So wherever I am weak, it's an opportunity for God to be God in my God giving space. Right where you're weak, God is saying, I'm getting ready to show up. I'm, I have you right where I want you. Give me your yes. I am here. I wrote this down as we get ready to close. Reveal your limitations. Expose your limitations. Embrace your limitations. Why? Because God can handle it. God can handle your limitations. Rise to our feet. God can handle your limitations. What's the very thing that you feel limited in this season? What's the very thing that you feel as though that's, that's hindering you, that's, that's holding you back? I, I, I want that to be on the top of your mind right now, on your heart. Expose it. Reveal it. Because God can only touch the very thing that you reveal. Can I pray over that for you? Father God, we love you. We honor you. We thank you. Even though that we may be in a limited season right now, we feel limited in love, in hope. We feel limited in, in, in faith, faith, in believing even for the now. We present ourselves to you and say, God, teach us and release the very thing that we need. You can handle our limits. If everything that's hindering us right now, we ask that you begin to, to speak to it, touch it, show up as your word says, Lord God, we are praying a dangerous prayer right now where your word says we are weak. We know that you're getting ready to show up. So we are praying not a what if prayer. We are praying when you do. I know you are. And when you do, I'm giving you, I'm rejoicing. Even right now, we are praying that type of prayer. 
thing that's hindering us, that's blinding our vision even right now. Some of us can't even see tomorrow. To struggle to see into the vision when you can't even see hope for tomorrow. I thank you that you are the God of yesterday, that you are the God of today, and you are the God of evermore. That you go into our future and you begin to prepare the way. We love you so much. We honor you. Begin to touch their very hearts. Even in this space. We honor your son, Jesus. That, that, that your word says that you are the one that make the crooked straight. In order to, to actually give our full yes to anything in life, we got to make sure we give our full yes to, to, to your Lord and to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Maybe that's you in here today that maybe, maybe you're in a season of your life where you're, you actually never committed your, 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 your life to Jesus and accepted him as your Lord and Savior. Or maybe you're in a space of this season, your spat. God is calling you to rededicate your life back to him. The greatest decision you will ever make in life is saying yes to Jesus. How are you saying yes today? I want, I want to lead you into our salvation call. That's you in here right now. All our heads are bowed. All eyes are closed. Just want to know who I'm praying with. I can see you. Just, just begin to stretch up your hand. If, if God is speaking to you right now, I want to pray that I want to lead you into this call. If you're on our online family, it's going to be a connect card right there in the description box. Please, please just click on that. I want to bring family, community around you to celebrate you, but also walk with you. If that's you, just simply pray these words with our family. We're going to pray them together. Say, Father God, we love you. We honor you. We thank you for Jesus Christ. I repent that I am a sinner. I believe in my heart. I've confessed with my mouth that Jesus is indeed my Lord and Savior. Live in me, breathe in me, guide me all the days of my life. I commit my life to you in Jesus' name. Oh, come on, somebody shout amen. Amen, 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 amen. As the buckets are going forth with the offering and tithes, I always want to say this, family, thank you guys so much for your overwhelming generosity. Even for Serve Sunday that's taking place next Sunday, here it is. That's a yes all because of you. Let's continue to make a difference. The ways to give will be on the screen. Uh, even for our online family, the ways to give will be right in the description box. Let's keep giving God our yes. Let's keep making a difference. I love you guys so much. Hey, we won't be here next Sunday. Don't break my heart. But definitely we will be serving and worshiping God in our church office. Get ready for serve Sunday. Amen. Amen. May, the, may God bless you. May he keep you. May he shine his face among you and give you peace and grace in all of your relationships. That his face is always turning toward you throughout this week. It is in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody shout amen. Amen. Love you guys so much. Enjoy your week. See you next Sunday.